Hi, I'm Dr. Ellen Stofan, also known as Dr. E, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to a very special episode of Easy Science, what we're calling Easy On The Go. Joining us from the Kennedy Space Center is my co-host, Dr. Thomas Serbukin. Dr. Z, where are you right now? Hey, I'm in Florida. It's really warm and at the Kennedy Space Center, and uh, I'm right near the launch site where within 48 hours, uh, this uh, spacecraft will go into space. Right now, you see the rocket moving from a building where it was integrated vertically, standing up, and on top of it, you see, right, is the spacecraft and it's being ready to go to Mars. So we're right here and the rocket is moving within less than 48 hours, just a few hundred yards this way, the spacecraft is gonna to go to space. So I'm a look forward to the launch. I really miss you. I was hoping you'd be here with me, but, but tell me about your launches. You've been uh, to other launches before, have you? That's right. My, my dad was in charge of first the Atlas Centaur and then the Titan Centaur rocket. So I went to my first launch when I was four years old. Uh, went to launches down at the Cape the whole time I was growing up, but probably the most special launch for me and one that I definitely, you know, feel very nostalgic with this launch is the launch of the first uh, Viking lander to Mars. In August of 1975, I was 14 years old and it was at that launch that I heard Carl Sagan speak about why we were exploring Mars, a search for life and understanding its geology and comparing it to Earth's geology that I said, I wanna be a planetary geologist and that was what I ended up doing. Uh, what an amazing uh, beginning of a career and of course on this rocket is the perseverance and the ingenuity of all these thousands of people who built it. But what is the most exciting part for you relative to the science you think uh, we're gonna get from this? So one of the things I'm most excited about is MOXIE, this instrument on board Perseverance that's actually gonna pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and split the oxygen away from the carbon atoms. That's important because oxygen is a resource that future human explorers to Mars will need both for water to breathe and to make rocket fuel. We call it in situ resource utilization. How do you live off the land? MOXIE's the first step. There's so much I'm excited about, but you know, Thomas, it, to me, it really comes back to if the Viking launch inspired me, who are we inspiring with this launch, with perseverance, with ingenuity? Yes, you know, for me, my first launch was only, can you believe that when I was in this job, I was never able to go before. And, and every time I see a launch vehicle and I see a launch, I really turn emotional. It, it actually affects me a lot more than I care to admit. It's just such a, an amazing moment when something that is an engineering project becomes a space mission. And I really look forward to that. You'll be in my thoughts uh, during the entire time. And I'll, I'll be sure to send you some uh, pictures uh, on the way, Alan. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. And, and good luck. Everybody is rooting for you. Go Atlas, go Perseverance. Yes, thanks so much, Alan. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm just so impressed by all the work that the scientists and engineers have done to get us to this point to launch, despite all of the challenges that COVID-19 has brought. It's shown a lot of perseverance. I'm gonna be watching the launch from DC. Fingers crossed, everything's gonna go well. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Easy Science on the Go.